Starlink provides high-speed internet services to people living in remote areas via a huge network of satellites. Elon Musk made the Starlink network available in Ukraine after the Russian invasion and shipped almost 15,000 sets of dishes and routers. However, Starlink satellites are creating problems for astronomers. It's mainly because these satellites catch the sun's light and reflect it, which causes streaks on telescope images, obscuring the views of stars and planets. Starlink is determined to reduce the brightness of its satellites and developed a second-generation satellite to solve this problem. Stay till the end to know why it's currently impossible to launch these second-generation satellites into orbit. Welcome back to our channel, where we provide you with the facts related to Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies. Before heading on to the video, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss another of our updates. Starlink is a network of satellites in low Earth orbit, or LEO, which is designed to provide internet service around the globe. SpaceX is developing a system including thousands of satellites to deliver faster connectivity across a wider coverage area as compared to traditional broadband satellites. Many people declare that they have seen the satellites of SpaceX in the skies. So how much do the Starlink services cost? Elon Musk's SpaceX stated to the federal regulators that their internet service has around 400,000 subscribers around the world. They extended their service option this year, and Starlink's base service costs around $110 a month, without considering the $599 upfront cost for hardware. It also provides a premium option for its customers that cost $500 per month, with $2,500 for hardware purposes. An additional $25 portability fee was added by the company for the users who relocate their satellite antenna, along with the Starlink for RVs option that allows the customers to pause service on a month-to-month -month basis. Moreover, the company is going to expand the in-flight Wi-Fi market. They signed contracts with air carriers, Hawaiian Airlines and JSX to add Starlink antennas to their aircraft. SpaceX is expected to begin delivering service to commercial aircraft in about a year, however, it is pending regulatory approval. SpaceX told the Federal Communications Commission on May 29th that Starlink is active in 48 different U.S. states and available in 36 countries so far, and they are expanding their service to most of Asia, Africa and the Middle East next year. The Starlink website shows an availability map that demonstrates a handful of countries where the service is not listed as coming soon including Afghanistan, Belarus, Cuba, China, Iran, North Korea, Russia, Syria, and Venezuela. SpaceX has launched about 2,500 Starlink satellites to support its global network. Help to Ukraine As soon as Russian forces advanced in Ukraine, they shut down Ukrainian internet service and tried to block social media. Elon Musk came to Twitter and specified that he will provide Starlink networks in Ukraine and made it available soon after the invasion started. Starlink kept things going in Ukraine, such as public services and government. It has also been used on the battlefield and proved to be a major source of communication between the headquarters and the troops. Russia can't block Starlink signal like ordinary radio signals, and it takes only 15 minutes to set up the kit. Problems associated with Starlink satellites Starlink is the sole internet provider with satellites in low Earth orbit. Besides, Amazon is planning to launch thousands of its Kuiper satellites into low Earth orbit, and OneWeb is also planning to put satellites there. SpaceX was criticized for the brightness of its Starlink satellites by astronomers, and Elon Musk with his team at SpaceX not only heard that criticism, but also responded to it properly. They are actively collaborating with the astronomy community to resolve the issue. Through this collaboration, they identified and mitigated the key elements of the brightness of satellites. They are constantly working to make Starlink satellites invisible to the naked eye when they are at standard operational altitude. If satellites are illuminated by the sun at night, they can also be visible to observers from the Earth. But the visibility of any sort of satellite depends mainly on the materials used for its surfaces because the satellites can't emit their light and the brightness is the result from natural sunlight scattering off the satellite's surfaces and reflecting down to Earth. The light can scatter in two different ways, specular or diffuse. SpaceX is investing in specular surfaces because specular light is reflected at a single angle the same as a mirror, whereas diffuse lights reflect from many angles. They noted that every material is not highly reflective. Materials can also be absorptive or make the light that is reflective much less bright. The satellites launched by SpaceX are visible from the ground in two ways. 
The first possibility suggests that the sunlight scatters off the main body of the satellite, whereas the other possibility suggests that the sunlight scatters from the solar arrays. SpaceX adopted mitigations for both the problems for its first generation of satellites to overcome this problem. Sun Visors SpaceX developed sun visors for the first generation of satellites, which block sunlight from hitting the bottom side of the satellite's body. These sun visors were produced from materials that engineers developed to be invisible to radio frequencies. The sun visors, however, block their laser links developed by SpaceX to expand coverage to remote regions of the world and generated significant drag on the satellites. So SpaceX determined that sun visors are not a permanent solution. RF Transparent Mirror Films to solve the brightness problem, SpaceX developed RF transparent mirror films as an alternative to the sun visors. These films scattered most of the sunlight away from the Earth. SpaceX said that it has been improving its mirror films to scatter less light back to the Earth, and they plan to create an enhanced version of the film on its second generation satellites. Did you know that the upgraded satellites are equipped with three bits of technology? SpaceX suggested that the second gen satellites included dielectric mirror film, solar array mitigations, and black paint to solve the brightness problems. SpaceX will cover the chassis of the satellites with a second gen dielectric mirror film, which reduces the observed brightness 10 times as compared to the first generation satellites by using a bi directional reflectance distribution function, or BRDF metric. They researched thoroughly and maximized the film's specular scatter. The core of the film is a Bragg mirror incorporating several thin layers of plastic that have a variety of refractive indices which create interference patterns internally to reflect the light. Radio waves can also pass through it without any blockade. Titanium oxide and silicon dioxide protective layers were added to protect the film. Additionally, SpaceX plans to offer the dielectric mirror film as a product on the Starlink website due to the reason that SpaceX cannot reduce the effect of satellites on space exploration by itself. The film will be offered at a cost and other operators will use it to minimize the effect on their constellations. Apart from dielectric films, SpaceX has made the satellite solar panels even more absorbent by adding a dark red intercell backing material to mitigate the light bouncing off of these panels. In the second generation hardware, SpaceX will also use internally developed low reflective black paint on additional components. The black material has a five times lower specular peak as compared to the darkest available paint. SpaceX stated that its goal is to develop the second generation satellite in a way that it will not be visible to the naked eye while on station serving users. Although the second gen satellites are nearly ready to launch, getting them into the station is currently impossible. These satellites are too heavy for anything but SpaceX has yet to launch Starship to get them into orbit. While giving an interview on a YouTube channel, Elon Musk stated, We need Starship to get to orbit because it's the only thing that can carry the Starlink 2 satellites. The Falcon 9 rocket of SpaceX has neither the mass nor the volume to get into orbit with Starlink 2 satellites that measure about 1.25 tons and are 7 meters long. SpaceX is developing the Starship for this purpose, but it is yet to make an orbital flight. It met several accidents and 75 operational shortcomings identified by the FAA in June, so it won't be able to make it to orbit anytime soon. The planned launch dates by Elon Musk continue to come and go without a launch. SpaceX needs to develop software in the meantime that can remove the satellite streaks until Starship gets off the ground. Do tell us your views in the comment section. How much time do you think SpaceX requires to launch its second generation satellites into orbit? If you've reached this far, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so you don't miss any future updates. See you in the next video. Until then, take care.